So, hello guys, and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to present you, first of all, a concept, which I'd like to call non-physical slimestone connections. Uh, more, in, more in particular, direct powering, of which I have an example right here, which brings us to the second part, a machine, which is a machine you see right here, or which consists out of two flying machines, actually. So, yeah, we'll look into that in a second. Uh, as well, as at the end of this video, I'm going to have a bit of a channel update, um, discussing some of the future projects and stuff I have uh, planned, because uh, basically today or yesterday, it's a bit depending on how you look at it, I finished the big Samsung project, which is going to be the 1000 subscriber special, if that's coming anytime soon. I mean, I don't want to be too like arrogant or anything, but it does look like it's going to come soon, and that's pretty nice. But yeah, I mean, things stuff, of course, stuff could still happen, but the way things are looking right now, it's probably gonna happen, so that's really cool. So thank everyone for subscribing. If you did, uh, if, if you didn't, well, thanks for watching, I guess. Um, and yeah, never feel inclined to subscribe or something just to help me or something. Just do it if you want to watch my stuff, and that's fine. Like, it's it's, it's nice to have thousands of people be interested, of course, but actually be interested then. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that, I guess. Now. Um, I got to more of that later on in this video, but first I think I should keep to the slimestone. So, uh, for the projects, as usual, this is uh, something to do with the project, which you will probably find out in a couple of weeks when I release the video. Um, I needed some way to basically get to a pretty tricky situation with a vertical slimestone machine. And the concept I thought of, of having, of, well, a way to fix this would be non-physical slimestone connections. Normally, if you connect, if you if you want to have something be pulled up or pulled down, you connect it to an engine. For example, if we say we want to have this section of the flying machine, if you want it to go up and down, uh, in certain instances, we uh, have it connect to an expander, which makes it well. In this case, um, we well we start in the expanded state and we try to make it smaller, so we use an expander, but in the reverse order, until we can connect it to an engine, and then we can use that engine to move the entire thing. Now what we use right here is are of course slam blocks to connect these different parts, like here and here for example. Or you could even say that all these slam blocks are a connection. And this is a bit of an issue if you for example have a wall we want to get your stuff through. Um, even if you have a one block gap in your wall, uh, you can't have your wall like this because slam stone grabs stuff along and a setup like this would just mean the slam block will try to grab this block along and this block will try to get all of these or all of these along, depending on what direction you're going in. And in reality, you just won't be able to do anything really, because it, the slime blocks are constantly touching other stuff. So, in order to fix this, um, I thought of, well, getting non-physical, as in not the typical slime stone uh, connections you have right here, but still have two flying machines. Well, still have like basically was effectively one flying machine which ended up in two flying machines, which are not physically separated. And that's an example I have of this right here. And I should probably show it, because I actually haven't done it yet this video, and most people are probably wondering what the hell this thing actually is. But as you can see, the uh, left part has the engine, the right part has no functional engine whatsoever, yet, um, just because it gets powered every week, um, every block, it goes down as well. It's, uh, in this, with this concept, I like to call this machine the guide and this the follower. And they are always separated, which is by definition, of course. So, I mean, we call non-physical uh, connections. And this connection particularly is what I'd like to call direct powering. As in, we're powering uh, part of the engine directly from uh, our guides to our follower. And, yeah, I'll just quickly go over how this thing works. So, over here we have regular engine, paddock, vertical action engine. Uh, I'll link to the video in the description where I show this one, as well as, well as the expander, that's also basic stuff. And uh, over here, uh, we expand it more, and what we basically have is we have uh, two butts. Right here, we've got one, I can, I can trigger them. That is a typical slam, uh, slam lock butt, how they work is really simple, you have a sticky piston, uh, like a vertical one, for example, is some which is one which is used quite often. You have a piston, slam block, redstone block, so right now it's being powered by this redstone block. It doesn't know that, so when you update it, it powers itself. But when it's completely powered, the redstone block is right here. It isn't powered anymore and it's back. That's how basically how it works. And uh, so yeah, 
that's what makes, makes that work. Same thing as here. Uh, for some reason, I don't really understand why, but uh, this thing most people know, I guess, is that if you don't have a block, two blocks in front of the piston, you don't get a butt, you just get a weird clock. And these are actually quite annoying to stop, so the best way is just to play the piston, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, always make sure you have a block rack right here or right here. Anyway, so this uh, guide, as I like to call it, has two of his butts, and really all they do is just, whenever and the, the machine gets moved up, this butt will trigger. So say this one has moved up one block, then this resting block will be here, it will trigger, it will push one block here, and then go back. Something else you should probably know about these spots is that they have a pretty interesting property, which is that they uh, cause one tick pulses. Example, uh, if I have a piston right here, probably most people know that if you have one tick pulse going to a piston, then the piston, a ticky piston, then the piston will just leave the block in its extended position. If it was extending and if it's retracting, then it will put it back in its own position. And yeah, as you can see, that's the behavior we get here. And that's actually quite useful because here, what we have is an unfinished, an, un an incomplete battery uh, unidirectional engine. Sorry. Um, how we normally build a unidirectional engine would be like this, for example. But this is going to be a butt engine, actually, because uh, you need to uh, give an update every time you want to move the thing. But um, like, if you want to make this a real engine, you would have to have something up of the slack here. This would be a real engine, but it would fly off, so I'm not going to show that, actually. Um, now, but as you can see, every time you update this, it sees, oh, I'm powered, let's extend, oh, I'm not powered anymore, let's retract and grab this piston along. And then, once that, all that's done, this piston will notice, oh, look, I'm actually powered by this lesson block, let's push. Well, if you do this, only the top piston is powered. So you basically just get a butt if you in its normal position, because this piston isn't powered anymore, so it doesn't correctly function anymore. Um, however, if you power the lower piston, quickly, then basically you will, um, you could say, simulate a normal engine cycle, or whatever you want to call it. And at the top right here, I basically got the same thing, just another incomplete unidirectional engine, this one goes down. So whenever the, this machine, the guide, is going up, the follower will uh, get triggered in at the regular position of, a uh, regular pist piston of its lower engine, which goes up, and when the guide is going down, the follower will get triggered in its uh, regular piston of its upper engine, which goes down. And I guess should, we can show this in all in action now, with it explained. So yeah, as you can see, every time it gets triggered, this one pushes up, this one pulls it back up, and all the rest just comes along as if it's a normal engine, firing the whole thing. And yeah, that's really it. Um, now, of course, back to the problem I had, is getting this thing through a one white wall, uh, well, one white hole in a wall, I would say. And yeah, here we go. This is actually this setup. I well, I, the setup I use also involves some static redstone, which I won't show, I think. But um, yeah, I can show this entire thing normally. Actually, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, we should probably have this. And we need this. And you also don't need this. I think this should be good. Yeah, that should be good. Uh, actually, this thing is not getting properly pushed. Hmm. Yeah, this thing is going to have problems, I think, when it tries to go up. Let's quickly add some fingers here to make sure it doesn't have any issues. There we go. Oh, well. Um, so yeah, this should normally also work. Let's quickly show you an action. And uh, yeah, it's working. And as you can see, the slam, blo slam blocks never really touch the wall, so there are no issues. The only thing which just touches the wall is the resin block, and that thing, of course, is just a normal solid block which doesn't drag anything along with it. So yeah, we've basically fixed the issue, and that's, I guess, the main portion of this video. Um, what I was maybe should also show is another concept I thought of of doing pulling up this one, one of them, like this, pulling up this non-physical connections system uh, and it is actually over here-ish, let me quickly make this faster like I don't want to show everything so let me see, it is a red spot yeah this looks like a red spot uh, yeah, 
Okay. Mm. Where did I put this thing? Yeah, I have lower lighting distance because I don't want to show the project yet. And there's a bunch of stuff I nearby which I don't want to show yet. So, this was an earlier concept of me. There's no way a functional flying machine or anything, but just to explain the concept I had earlier, which is basically not doesn't use direct powering, but what I guess I should call indirect... Uh, you could say called indirect powering, kind of depends. But this is really a more interesting concept because what it can actually do is go through walls, not just through a hole, but actually this uses this assumes there is a wall always in between itself and the uh, between the guide and the follower, and uh, it uses that. So the idea was basically to have a again have a butt which every time it goes up it pushes one block, which means that you could have like a five tick wall or something and it will push one block out, and that thing pushes a block uh, pushes one of the components of the followers flying machine, which would then in turn power the engine, or but the engine or whatever you have planned. And that would cause the entire thing to go up and also push, of course, uh, push the block back. It just got pushed in. Uh, however, this was a more complex thing. And also, the idea of having a wall extend uh, all the way from the top to the bottom of where this flying machine had to go wasn't really to work out. So I decided to ditch this concept and go for the direct powering example I showed earlier. Uh, but I was thought maybe some people want to give this a try. Uh, feel free to, it would be really cool if you managed to get a system working like this. Uh, but since I have my solution, which does a trick for me, I'm not really going to look too much into it anymore. Now, I think that's about it for the uh, slime stone. Uh, quickly for the channel updates. Um, as I said, I already f I finished the big projects yesterday or today, whatever you want to uh, call it. And yeah, as a result, actually, all the slime stone you've been seeing since March was all in context of this big project. There were, were all things I needed for the project. And uh, yeah, as a result, there won't be as much limestone in the future. However, there are still two other concepts slash machines I want to show. There will still be two more videos about limestone um, before I'm all done with things I want to show of the project, except for the project itself. Uh, the project itself will probably be released near the end of this month of May. And it will also have an explanation video, probably like a week later or something, which will be pretty long and intensive, so I'm not sure if people would want to watch that, but I thought I owed an explanation to those who are interested in it, the concept. Or rather the entire machine, I guess. Uh, so that thing will also be there. Uh, apart from that, I still have uh, two redstone videos I plan to make for a while, since January. Uh, because of some redstoning I did back then. It's just static redstoning, has nothing to do with slamstone or anything. Uh, this is based on a video about redstone jazz, and I thought it was pretty interesting, but I never got around to making the video about it, nor com I didn't completely f com um, complete the thing, but it's, it's it's almost done. It's practically done. And uh, I should probably show that as well at some point, so there's also two videos which I plan to make. And there's also a video uh, about, well, there's also a filter. I got suggested by Jacob, yesterday. Uh, I will try to link his channel in the description. If, well, probably his Twitter in the description in case you guys uh, want to check it out. And probably I'm going to forget, so if he's not there, please tell me. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I will probably make a video about that as well, if I actually uh, go and make that filter. Maybe not, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, I think that's going to be about it uh, for the video. So I'm just saying that right now, because the project is over, there won't be as much limestone, and maybe there also won't be a, that much active. Vi maybe there won't be weekly videos anymore, or something starting in June. I'm not sure. I may get around to reflex again uh, with this project out of the way, or some other uh, custom maps I've been work uh, collaborating on. There's a lot, a lot of projects, but I'm, there's not all video material, I would say. So yeah, I'd just like to say that uh, in advance. Now I know that the project is over, and. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, I think it's going to be about it for this video, though. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you liked the concept, and maybe you also gave some inspiration to do stuff like this yourself and get this actual through wall connection going, which would go through a physical wall. That would be really interesting if someone can pull that off. Um, maybe also quite use for the direct powering machine I built a short earlier. There will be a schematic for that, of course, down in the description. And I hope you also found it useful to hear what is going to happen to my channel in the near future. Now that's going to be about it, so thanks for watching, and I hope I will see you in another video.